What's up, friends? Welcome back to the Well That's Good podcast. Today we have two very special guests, and they're actually in the house with us. They have a new book out called Sister Roar, and it is none other than my grandma and my aunt, Miss K, as y'all know, Memo K for me, and Aunt Lisa. Welcome to the podcast. Thank Thanks. you. We're glad we're here. I am so glad y'all are here. This is going to be so much fun. And I, I can't believe y'all haven't been on the podcast already, but now we have a really fun reason to yeah. be on the podcast. With well, us. you know, I was so excited to be on your podcast that I came a month early. I know. <laughs> so I'm up here and I'm like, and, and I'm saying, Kay, hurry up and get here. Hurry up and get here. And then I call Sadie. Sadie, when are you going to be here? And she's like, uh, it's next month. I know. I'm like, what? <laughs> and you're like, I'm in your studio. I'm like, why? <laughs> now, hilarious. I'm the old person here. I should be the one that forgets, right? I know. That was really funny. I'm sorry you had to get dressed twice, no, but you look great. That's all right. That's you all right. look great. No uh, I don't know if y'all have seen Masterminds, but there's a quote in it, and the wife had to get ready so many times, and he goes, well, third time's a charm. You look great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta ask you the question I ask everyone on this podcast. What is the best <coughs> piece me. You're good. What is the best piece of advice that you've ever been given? Mo, okay, you want to go first? I do. And it was my grandmother, who I lived with a lot growing up more. I think I stayed more with her than at home. And uh, she told me, as we were sitting in a swing, just talking in the evening, and she always talked about good things. But she said, I want you to remember hmm. that when you marry, it's for life. Well, and you will stay with your husband through thick and thin. Mm -hmm. And, you know, no matter what kind of trouble comes your way, that you say, I made a vow to God and I'm keeping it. Wow. And look, you did. And 64 years later, yeah, here I am. That's amazing. I want to stop there for a second and talk about that because, um, you know, now y'all are still married and you have this legacy of grandkids, great grandkids. You have um, a famous family, which is probably really crazy to even think of. I'm sure you never thought that would happen. No. Um, and you're still married, but y'all went through a lot of hard times. And so through those 10 years, 10 years of hard times. And some people might have heard that some people might not have. But what was that like during those times? Do you feel like that piece of advice really helped you get through? I know years? it did. Yeah. Well, wow. there's no way. Because I had family, <clears throat> on my family, family on Phil's family say, you need to leave him. You need to leave him. Mm -hmm. You need to leave him. And then I was kind of alone saying, I'm not leaving. Wow. I mean, I made a vow, and I'm not going. Wow. And then the only way it, it was uh, broke was when Phil told us that we had to leave. Wow. I mean, he kicked, literally kicked us out of our trailer. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. How did that tell a little bit about that redemption story? About oh. so, from the time he kicked y'all out of your trailer to the time he came back, what was that time period? Oh, it was our. We lived in the Pine Terrace Apartments, little inexpensive, based on your salary, which I was just working, making like two hundred fifty dollars a month. That's all I had. Wow. But I did have the White's Ferry Road Church to help me so much and. You know, just this horrible feeling. And every night, I told my kids, we'll pray for Phil. And uh, <clears throat> then we took, you know, when I took my stuff from the house when he wasn't there, I took the black and white TV. I took mm -hmm. me, even he's the man doing the trouble, but I consider he likes that TV so much. We'll get the little one. Wow. And then doing all that kind of stuff. And, you know, every day our boys would just pray with us, me together with Phil to change and come to God wow. and do that. But while we were waiting and not knowing, my boys got involved in the pink bus ministry <clears throat> and they won awards for bringing the most people to church. Wow, that's awesome. And see, it kept our mind doing off of other things and just feeling sorry for ourselves. Yeah. And that we wasn't, but um, wow. I'm telling you, what he found out in that three or four months that he was gone was what he thought he wanted, hmm. the bachelor life, the do anything you want life. And he called it finding his freedom. Wow. <clears throat> he said, that wasn't my freedom at all. Wow. And so when he came to my work and was down in the old gray truck 
And my friend and I were just coming back from lunch, and we saw him, and she said, oh, no, Phil's here. Do you think he'll bring a gun and kill us all? And I was like, no, you saw too much TV about that. I said, <laughs> and she said, well, you never know. And I said, well, I'm going out to talk to him because I don't want him to come into the office maybe well, and, you know, start. Make a scene. Yeah. yeah. Because that's kind of how he was back then. Oh, it was. He didn't care what he said or who he said or anything. So I went out there, and when I opened the door, he was leaned over the the uh, steering wheel, and I thought, oh, he's drunk. But no, hmm. he was tears were coming down his eyes. I've never seen him cry. Wow. And they were coming down his eyes, and he said, I can't live without you. I can't live without my family. I, I don't want to be without my family. I, wow. I don't want what I've been doing. He said, I want to I wanna be back. Wow. And he said, and I told him I had to be very brave. And, you know, because I love this, where he was so humbled. Yeah. And what I had to say was, I said, Phil, you need to change your life and you need to come to somebody. And he said, God? I said, yep, and his son, Jesus Christ. And then he said, I don't know how. Wow. And, you know, it, it showed you, you knew he's known all that, but it wasn't personal to him. Yeah, totally. And so that night we met a deal that he would follow me home at 530 to my apartment. Mm -hmm. And all of the boys were so glad to see him. Aww, and they so said, sweet. Daddy, can you please bring back that color TV? We have to watch <laughs> this little old TV and... It's not good at all. And, and Mama wouldn't take the color when she left it for you. Aww. And he said, yeah, I'll bring it tomorrow. And they said, well, what about tonight? And he said, no, because after I agreed, you know, to talk to him, yeah. and we had that session with Bill Smith. Yeah. For, well, first it was just, we talked to him, and then he wanted just to talk to Phil. Wow. So we did that, and the kids and I were back in the bedroom. They were had their head suit or trying to hear what he was saying I said leave no he he knows what to say Bill Smith you know wow. and they said well what if daddy says a cuss word I said I'm sure Bill Smith has heard that before <laughs> and he's, he's not sweet. a Christian he doesn't have Jesus so he's gonna say whatever and it, you know it is yeah. embarrassing for you and me and everybody else but when your own when the devil's in you that's what he wants you to do yeah and then he said, Alan said, well, will Jesus ever be in Daddy? And he said, I said, yes. Wow. I know it because he's agreed to even talk about it. Yeah. And so, then, you know, he came every night for three nights, and I let Phil stay then. Yeah. And then we came back, and there's a big note on the door, and it said, come to the church right away. So me and the boys, it was three of them, we loaded up and ran and when we walked in the back of the church, they were in the baptistry. Wow. And uh, Bill Smith was asking him, who's going to be the Lord of your life? Mm. And he said, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and he said, you know, a couple of more things. Mm. I don't remember. And then I looked down at my boys, and just tears were rolling Aww. down their <laughs> eyes. That's awesome. <laughs> and they said, Jason said, does that mean that the devil's not going to be living and dying now? And I said, that's exactly what that means. He's going to have Jesus. And and Jason, all of the boys said, but what if he goes to church and says a cuss word? <laughs> I said, well, you know what? It's called grace. Yeah, We'll forgive him because he has to learn how to live right. Yeah, He doesn't know. Yeah, He hadn't been that way. So that was our beginning wow. of the, it, he was 28, I was 27. Wow. And Alan and Jason remember the most of it. And Alan, I mean, he was just, Alan had helped me so much that I probably would have had a nervous breakdown. Wow. But he was a little man at a young age. Yeah. And I felt so bad. I said, you didn't get to play baseball and do all those things kids do because you were helping me with the kids. Hmm. And you know what he said? Alan said, Mom, I did exactly what God wanted me to do. That's and I did not awesome. need all that. Wow. I needed my family. And see, that's when so yes. many people throw in the towel. And look what we went through. Yeah. Yeah. And here we are and made a difference, I believe.
All right, fam, I want to talk to you about Liberty University, something that's so near and dear to my heart and so easy to rave about, honestly. What I love about Liberty is they are truly training champions for Christ and have been for over 50 years. I mean, what a legacy, and their mission has never wavered. There are so many ways that I could praise this university, but my absolute favorite thing is while you're learning educationally, you're also growing and learning so much spiritually, which is just honestly amazing. Like I said, this year Liberty is celebrating its 50th anniversary all because one man had a vision to establish a university that would impact thousands of lives for Jesus Christ. Since the first year in 1971, Liberty has been a campus of answered prayers and miracles. What began with only 154 students has now become over 250,000 alumni serving around the globe and more than 125,000 studying on campus and online. Y'all, that's amazing. Liberty offers many scholarships and discounts to help you reach your goals at a price that you can afford. I actually love my experience at Liberty so much. I only had one semester there, but it was awesome. Their professors were great. I love the ability to do class remotely while I was also managing a hectic schedule. And my brother, John Luke, my brother, Will, and my sister, Bella, also have gone to Liberty and love the experience the same. My brother went in person, Bella's online, and both had just great experiences. It was such a time of growth for all of us in many areas and Liberty was the catalyst. In fact, many people would choose to attend class remotely with more than 450 online degrees from the associate to doctoral level. And today, most classes are 100% online. So if you've been on the fence, check it out today because online classes begin every single eight weeks. And if you're looking to attend in person, there are more than 300 undergrad and graduate degrees to choose from. What a great experience and opportunity to meet new friends with students um, all over the world. 50 states and over 70 countries represented. I could honestly go on and on, but to start your future, go to liberty.edu slash Sadie. And because you're a well, that's good listener, you'll also get your application fee away. So that's awesome. Friends, don't wait. Go to liberty.edu slash Sadie now and get your future started today. Come on. That makes me like tear up and I know the story and I'm just like, it's so powerful and it's so so hope filled for so many people because I mean, if we're being honest, there's so many people listening to this podcast who feel the exact same way that y'all felt. Maybe their story looks different, but they feel like I want to throw in the towel. I want to give up. My life is not what I thought it was going to look like. Maybe my marriage is falling apart that I thought was going to be forever. Maybe my kids are not getting to do the stuff because we don't have money. And here you are and given so much hope. And it's not saying, but look at where we're at because we're this or that. It's like, look at where we're at because we have Jesus. Like, look at what happened because Jesus came into our He would have never changed without Jesus. Yeah, like that was the thing. But And that I think some about the verse of how the wife's, behavior Mm -hmm. can lead their husbands and I think in that and I'm not bragging on myself it was only because I came to Christ at 27 totally and so it was just like from then Mm. you know it was the real deal you know and I had told when I prayed at Whites Ferry Road um, when Bill studied with me I said, I want to tell God that I'm with him, Hmm. and I want my husband with him, Hmm. but if not, I'll follow him, and I'll have three little boys right behind me. Wow. What I love about your story is, like, the commitment aspect to, like, when you make a promise, like, you keep it, and it reminds me of that verse when it says, let your yes be your yes and your no be your no, and I was just studying that the other day. I'm like, why did Jesus say that? And it's basically saying, like, like if you have to say like I promise or I swear, it makes it seem like when you say yes that you're not being truthful. It yeah. may it waters down your words. But when you just say yes and that's enough, and you, when you just say no and that's enough, there's such like a respect for you. There's such a trust. And for you, like I think a lot of people can learn from just that commitment aspect with Jesus and with your family, with your husband. Like when you say yes, that's a yes. Yeah. When you make a promise and a commitment, that's who you're gonna follow. And I just love it. Uh, for those listening, so Alan, who she's talking about, the <laughs> the young man, you know, who was, what, nine years old at yes. the time? Yeah. He is Lisa's husband. And so Lisa and Alan, my aunt and uncle, and Lisa, um, y'all went through a lot of marriage stuff, too. I don't know what your best piece of advice is, but it's, it is interesting. And I want to talk to you about your marriage, too, but I want to hear your advice first. But a lot of times, people's best piece of advice, it really...
really does shape who they are in life, mm -hmm. you know? Like, you can look at that little thing and be like, wow, that really did stick with you, and that's that shows who you are. Like, what your grandma said to you, you received, and it changed who you are. And right. That's why I asked people that never left me. It was that so... question. Yeah. yeah. It's so it's so powerful. So, Lisa, what what's yours? Well, I think probably um, my best piece of advice, and I got after I got married, was... <laughs> um, was you know, don't let the sun go down on your yeah. anger and mm -hmm. don't sleep back to back. Yeah, you know? that's good. Yes. Um, settle your differences before you go to bed. That's good. Because during the night, whenever you're sleeping, mm -hmm. Satan is working yeah. on your thoughts and, and, you know, he's whispering little lies in mm -hmm. your ear. And, yeah. And so the next day, it's worse than it was the night before. Totally. You, you think know? you're going to sleep it off. That's but right. It, it's worse. That's it gains right. momentum. That's Almost. right. And I... I I believe that's because, you know, the devil is continuously, you know, whispering and talking yeah. to you all throughout, you know, your that's right. unconscious, you know, whenever you're totally. asleep. So, um, that's so that, that's my piece of advice that's that, good. um, that somebody told us, you know, just, just don't go to bed angry. You know, what's crazy about that is I remember Papa Shack. So my great grandpa, uh -huh. before he passed away, I was young and it's almost like your grandma said to you, like, it's so, it's almost strange that he said this to me, but I remember him saying it so clearly. I was sitting in their little computer room, you know mm -hmm. how they have the room where they have their computer in. And he walked in and he said, when you get married one day, never let the sun go down on your anger. And I was mm -hmm. like, and it just, I think because it was so random, maybe, right. it stuck with me. And so I remember when Christian and I were dating, it was like, just so you know, I'm not going to let <laughs> yeah, the sun go down right. on anger. Right. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to talk about this book because y'all wrote a book on sisterhood together, which is so yeah. <laughs> cool. I'm all about sisterhood. And for those who follow me, they know I always say I'm just trying to be a good sister and a friend. And y'all are too. Now people might see where I learned that from, yeah. this legacy of sisterhood. Um, one of the biggest questions I get asked, like I get this asked all the time when we open it up for Q&A is people say like, how do you handle mother-in-law relationships? And mm -hmm. here you are with your yeah. mother-in-law writing a book on sisterhood. Right. And so tell a little bit about y'all's relationship over the years and how y'all have even grown to the place where you can write this book. Well, when Al and I got married, I did not have a very good relationship with my own mother. Mm -hmm. um, it was very strained and it was throughout our life. I think even after I married, um, Alan was, you know, not who she had picked out for me. Mm. And, um, you know, he, she thought he was not good enough, you, wow. know, and, you know, and I think back on that and just think, mm, you know, yeah. maybe I wasn't good enough for him, yeah. but, um, so, you know, I didn't know how to do anything. I didn't know how to cook. Mm. Um, I didn't know how to take care of a husband. Mm. Um, when we got kids, I, you know, I didn't know really anything about raising kids. And so we lived right beside Kay and Phil. And so Kay taught me how to cook. Wow. Yeah. And, um, it's a good person to learn yeah, from. Yeah, that's right. As, you know, she's taught all of her daughter-in-laws, or she's tried. I tried. And yeah. failed with Corey. I know. I was going to say, <laughs> something happened with my mom. Something you know, and, and it was, I, I think God knew that Willie was going to be such a good cook. Yeah, because that's right. He took that from me. I know yeah, he did. He yeah. did. And, of course, Phil is a wonderful cook, too. Yeah. And so... Thank it just, God Dad had it. We had at least one parent who that's right. had it cook, cook, who got well, your legacy. And you got two mama too. She's I mean, she can cook, but she doesn't do a things. lot of that. Well she you know? only makes so, five things. My she mom joked the other day about how different you and two mama are and she said, I'll put it like this. Mama K will make three different meals a day. Two mama has three different meals to choose from. Do you want sloppy Joe's, spaghetti, yeah. or this <laughs> for the whole year, you know? And another funny thing yeah. your mom said, she said whenever she was growing up, it wasn't um, um, what do you want to eat? It was, where do you want to go to? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, so yeah, what restaurant true. are we going to? My mother-in-law doesn't cook either, but I always tell her, hey, you have a skill in knowing who to call, okay? That's she right. She knows what that's restaurant exactly to call. Right. To that's the same with two mama, and your mom learned it too. Yeah, two mama got Johnny's Pizza on speed dial. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. That's hilarious. And it's so funny, Kay, I was, I was telling her, she was telling me that she was dropping um, honey off uh, at Johnny's Pizza. And I said, well, Sadie, you're starting her off really young with Johnny's Pizza. And she said, 
Aunt Lisa, she does not like food, but loves Johnny's pizza. It's true. She so. is. I can't get her to eat anything. I put it up to her mouth. Honey literally curls her lips like, nah, no. Then Johnny's pizza, she starts cooking her legs. Yeah, it's, it's, she knows. She knows. <laughs> and yeah. she just eats yeah. regular pizza. Yeah, she loves like cheese pizza. Like she gets so excited. Nothing else. Like yeah. I'll give her all kinds of good stuff, but cheese pizza. Let me tell you something. Yeah. That girl knows. <laughs> she knows what's good. Well, Johnny's is the good. best. So it is. So you learn how to cook from. Her, that's how y'all started yeah. like tethering y'all's relationship together mm -hmm. and then now fast forward years later and y'all are talking about sisterhood and so what um why did y'all write this book together why did you feel like this was like an important thing uh for y'all to write You may or may not have heard about me talk about this when I was pregnant with Honey, but I was so sick, y'all. At speaking events, trying to get work done in the office or at home, wherever I was, I was like so, so sick, but I just had to keep going. And that's why I love Relief Band, and you will too. Relief Band is the number one FDA cleared anti-nausea wristband that has been clinically proven to quickly relieve and effectively prevent anxiety-induced nausea and vomiting. So if you deal with nausea from motion sickness, migraines, morning sickness, chemotherapy or even anxiety induced sickness I mean who hasn't been anxious with all the stress that we've had over the past two years relief band helps with that too their product is hundred percent drug free it won't make you sleepy hey yo love that and need that and has zero side effects originally designed over 20 years ago for hospital patients this technology is now available to everyone so just like the name says you simply put the band on your wrist and you can even adjust the intensity depending on how you're feeling that day so how it works is relief band simulates a nerve in the wrist that travels to the part of the brain that controls nausea from anxiety or other elements. It actually blocks that signal in your brain that is sending to your stomach telling yourself that you're sick. So crazy, right? So the morning sickness would have been so much better if I would have had relief band because I was searching all over the internet for products and this one would have been perfect. So even anxiety medications can cause nausea. Um, so you can end up trading symptoms for one side effect. But I love how effective this is, how quickly it works and how easy it is honestly just put a band on your wrist. Relief Band makes a great gift for any time of the year right now. They've got an exclusive offer just for Woe That's Good listeners. So if you go to reliefband.com and use promo code Woe, you receive 20% off plus free shipping and no question asked 30 day money back guarantee. That's really the best offer you're gonna find anywhere on Relief Band. So you need to do this right now. If you need this, if you wanna give it to someone, if you know someone who's struggling with this right now, you can use my code. So head to reliefband.com. That's relief, R-E-L-I-E-F, band, B-A-N-D.com and use promo code WOE for 20% off plus free shipping. Well, um, she taught me about ministry too, about women's ministry. Yeah. And, you know, living right beside her, I saw so many women, you know, men and women, families, yeah. um, just come and go. Uh, yeah. Because Kay and All Phil the time. would, yeah, yeah, Kay and Phil brought them in and they fed them and, and then they fed them the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of times they left behind wet towels because they would take them down to the river and baptize awesome. them. And so that's what, you know, my, my married years, um, that's all I saw. Yeah. So I learned what ministry was about. It was about learning. It's it was awesome. the, th the most important thing is it's about people. Yeah, you know, True. loving people. True. That's right. And I, I really got that from her. Can I say one sure. thing? The greatest command he gives us, you know, to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Number two is love one another. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people don't seem to get how easy it is. Yeah. It's one another. Yeah. You know, they'll say, well, I just can't. Yes, God gave you the ability. Yeah. Yeah. ability to love one another. That's so good. And it's like people always ask me, like, they, or they tell me, I want to do ministry one day. I'm like, why aren't you doing ministry now? Right. Like, ministry is not oh. a platform. Ministry is loving God and loving people. And you're right. You can do that anywhere. You can do that with whatever you have. And I can well, see. Well, they weren't, they weren't paid people to be doing yeah. ministry, you know? Yeah. Oh. They just loved people. So yeah. that was the reason why they did it. And that's oh, how that's we grew up. I mean, and your dad too. Yeah. Um, He's he loves ministry because he was in ministry his whole entire life. His whole life, you know? yeah. That's what I tell people. I'm like, 
I didn't just start ministry a few years ago when people started seeing me do ministry. I was baptizing people in bathtubs at our house at like, <laughs> you know, 15 years old. Yeah. Just because I love God and I love the people. And we'd sit there and we'd study the Bible and be like, who wants to get baptized? Because I saw my dad do that. I saw Papa Phil do that. Yeah. I saw all my family do that. And if there is a body of water, somebody's I can tell you a, yeah, a real story wet. that you don't know about, about your dad and Jason uh, were studying. And I really... Through their high school, they were so involved in the, uh, you know, the uh, student mm -hmm. part of it, you know. Uh, and so uh, they came one night. He called me and he said, we're coming. He said, we've really been studying with some people at a group. And he said, they're all coming. So I didn't know what they're all, how many <laughs> that is, you know. And so well, you just want me to bring towels and all that. And he said... Uh, yeah, Mom, whatever, just just be ready when we come. <laughs> Fifteen kids. Oh, my gosh, that's awesome. Came and gave their confession and were baptized that night. I ran out of towels. Wow, that's I awesome. mean, it was just like, <laughs> and that was that was uh, Willie and Jace together. Awesome. Yeah. They were like, and they went through that high school so solid. Yeah. And so never, never turning their way on the, you know, the wrong that's way. Awesome. Isn't that great? Oh, it's so powerful, and mm -hmm. they're still doing it. Yeah, still, to this day, we yeah. have people go out in our pond all the time. Uh -huh. We have people show up and go down to the river all the time. That's right. Uh, one of the things y'all talked about in the book, speaking of ministry, and the reason we have muffins here today yeah. that you so kindly brought is because of your muffins group. And so talk mm. a little bit about your muffins, how that started, and what that's been like. It, it was, I don't know how many years ago, but I had a girlfriend in Calhoun, and she said... I just think we need some women mm -hmm. together because you're helping me. You could help other people. I mean, why do you spend all this time with me when maybe five or six other women could be here and you can help them? So I was like, okay, I'm going to go for it. And the weirdest thing was one of the ladies um, that was in the first group, uh, uh, she had a little dress shop in Calhoun, Louisiana. And our meetings... The back room was just the in little inventory and all back there. We sat on the floor on our knees in a little circle of five or six That's women. Awesome. And that is how it first started. Wow. And then we got so crowded in there, we decided to take it outside. So we, we awesome. met with a, uh, on a picnic table by, beside that little store and did that. And I, I remember us getting bigger and had to get another picnic table wow. out there. And I remember we'd get up to pray at the end and how big the circle was. Wow, sweet. That's awesome. And, and look, it's good and it's and it's wonderful. But, I mean, two sisters actually had a fight there one day. Wow. And which I'm not. I'm not good at breaking up fights at all. <laughs> I can't but, really see you being that person. <laughs> that's right. But one of them said, I'm leaving. And I, I, you know, I said, no, no, no. So I came out there and the other one was crying over there. And so I, I, I was just holding on the truck. She was supposed to drive with hanging, me hanging on the truck. And I begged her and begged her to stay. And she said, I can't, Miss Kay. And she said, please get off the truck because I'm fishing to hurt you and I, you know I did everything and I said I'm gonna tell you something I'm talking to her and then don't worry uh, you'll see me today wow. again because you know uh, we've got to get this straightened out so well, I talked and comforted the girl uh, other one yeah. got her settled got her we prayed over her and she was in a okay shape so we said okay I said okay who's going to me with the other ones and I had a smaller group because some of them had to go yeah. and we went to that home and prayed with her and wow. got her settled and it was all okay but you know I never dreamed something like that would happen yeah but see you cannot be surprised yeah but you've just got to see God and see that you're you're representing him here what yep. would he do yeah would he just say well let him go you gotta fight for that sister yes yeah. good it's like you've I always told everybody i had to fight for my marriage and that's what many times we have to fight for our marriage for our kids for yep. our friends for our sister that's just true. all that you really have to look at it is you're fighting for Jesus. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. When you do that. That's good. That's so good. So why the muffins? Why? How did you come up with the name okay, of Okay, the, the muffins. One of my friends 
said, I know what I could do. She said, I'm going to make muffins for the group, you know. Because it was a morning group. Yeah. It was a morning, morning. Gr yeah. group. And I said, yeah. And I said, well, what are we going to call ourselves? And she said, the muffin group. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, yeah. So that's stuck. Clever. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I have a Bible study at my house uh, weekly on Saturdays, and we bring muffins most of the time. Uh -huh. And so that's, maybe we're the mini muffins. Yeah. That's right. That's what y'all yeah. could be. The mini and muffins. We have a new group name, the mini muffins. Uh, and fun. then we didn't bring muffins. We brought all kind of other food, but then somebody would say, why are you the muffin group? And, of course, I'd go back and tell. At that time, we would just bring muffins every yeah. Yeah. every time we had the group. And today, the World Let's Go podcast got blessed with the muffins up here. That's right. I love it. Yeah. So I want to ask y'all because I'm sure, like, growing up, the Robertson family is, um, what is the word for the Robertson family? We're wild. They're crazy. Yeah. Okay? like, like Different. Different. Yes, yes. All words are really yeah. working for who we are mm -hmm. as a whole. So I'm sure y'all never thought that we would be famous, that y'all would have a TV show. And now they're making a movie about y'all's life. Mm -hmm. Like, that is I, I, I will tell you something right quick. When I was a mother and they're all there and everything, and it was so wild and so different, I told Phil one day, I said, you know, we could make a movie about this crazy wow. family. <laughs> I said that. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. believe it, but it came back to me, and we laughed and laughed. Wow, and here you are doing that. I know. I was actually going to ask you that, like, because part of it is crazy, like, you would never think, but then part of me feels like you were born to be famous, Mama, okay? You, uh, you're you're just the I, woman for, for the job. Life has been a little crazy over here lately with multiple deadlines and projects, plus Honey's not exactly sleeping through the night and with everything going on, we just wanted to unwind in the evenings with Honey and spend quality time in this busy season. So in this busy season, shopping is not exactly a top priority, but just like any other busy mom, I still want to look cute and feel cute, and that's why I love Stitch Fix. If you've never heard of it, Stitch Fix is a service that allows you to basically have your own personal stylist that accommodates all of your favorites. So through taking a quick quiz, they're gonna determine what you love, even down to your favorite colors, the way you like or close to fit, and your preferred price point. I know sometimes I like a looser fit and Stitch Fix makes all of my personal details so simple. I love Stitch Fix because I wanna spend every free minute that I can with Honey, but without the time to browse and you know look for what I actually want, shopping, like I said, is kinda hard, except for Stitch Fix allows me to enjoy fashion without the time commitment. It's super easy and you can schedule your fix with five styles, hand selected for you without even having a subscription. I love the opportunity to shop through and keep what I love and easily return what I don't. So don't let this busy season keep you missing out on looking cute or feeling like you. Whether you need a cute girls night outfit or maybe you just want some loungewear or a outfit for work, Stitch Fix has you covered across the board. So maybe you actually like to shop but you don't have time to search. You can even choose the Stitch Fix freestyle option which allows you to go through an online shop built just for you including some of your favorite brands such as maybe Made well or sanctuary or so many more so make sure you check it out friends just get started today by filling out your free style quiz at stitchfix.com slash whoa and take advantage of free shipping and returns that's stitchfix.com slash whoa to try stitch fix stitchfix.com slash whoa you did not know that when i was a little girl well of course i had all these animals you know and yeah. i would rescue them and fix them and so I was so proud of my animals. I had sheep, I had everything, right. little, little lambs, you know. So I took it on myself. I had a lot of time because my parents worked all the time yeah. in their grocery store. So I would go around to all the older ladies I knew, and I knew them because my grandmother stayed with her, so they were like friends of hers. But I, they would often say how lonely they were. Mm. So I would think, I'll take my animal. And so that's what I would do. I would go from house, I walked everywhere with the animal. <laughs> that's awesome. And, and what, mostly I took the little lambs, but sometime I might take baby chicken and have him somewhere where he wouldn't poo on me. And then I would take a cat, I would take a dog. I would always feel like I had to, yeah. you know, take something like that for him to see and talk to him. It was just like a good opening. But I just walked all over the town and I would only pick the older women, because they were the ones 
that I knew were lonely. That's so sweet. She was doing animal therapy before animal what? therapy came along. You were. See, there's goat <laughs> yoga nowadays, but you had the original idea. I did. That's that's awesome. I did. That's but right. you've always, yeah. yeah, I mean, you're a people person, and I think that's mm-hmm. the thing. It's like, even whenever things seem so random, you're like, I would never imagine that. God's like put something in you that's prepared for it, yeah. you know? And I was thinking about whenever Duck Dynasty started, um, you, you and Alan had us over to y'all's house, and we kind of did this whole talk about like, um, just we're going to stay grounded, we're going to stay rooted yeah. in our faith, and, and we really did. And I, I was talking to Christian about that the other day, and I was like, I'm so proud of our family. Like, even just, like, Bella and Will and, like, my little siblings and then all of us and all of y'all that, like, nobody, you know, went off the deep end. You know, right. everybody was really grounded in faith. And, I mean, proud might, proud is the word, but also, I mean, I know that was by the grace of God. And everybody had journeys, everybody had ups and downs, but yeah. for the most part, just to remain, like, in love with God— so what do you think are some of the keys to, you know, when you get famous, how to navigate that? Because right now in today's day and age, a lot of people are getting famous. Like you can get TikTok yeah. famous in mm-hmm. one day. You know, you can be on The Bachelor, you know, just because you get selected. You can hit a reality TV show. You can, you know, be Instagram famous. There's like all these ways to get famous. And I think that people's motive maybe going in is what steers them in the wrong direction when they get there. But what are some like... I don't know, tips of advice for people to get famous who really want to stay grounded. Well, I think one thing is um, you got to remember where you came from. Oh, you know, yeah. you got to oh, you got to remember who put you in this position. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as a Robertson family, the whole of us, we always felt as though this was a gift from God. Yep. And no that, doubt. that what he gave us was a platform for us to proclaim him, yep. not us. Yep. It was not about us. It yep. was all about him. And he opened doors. I mean, so many doors um, for all of us, especially for you. I mean, you know, with you speaking to, wasn't it in a year you spoke to over a million teens or something? I mean, crazy. it was unbelievable. So you know, Phil God told that, that his sermon one night. Yeah. I think he said, uh, when it was a Sunday, and he said, Talking about Sadie, talking about he was trying to preach about everybody. It doesn't. They think there is one evangelist, one preacher, one, and that's who does everything. He said, "Not at all." He said, "I'm going places. All my family." uh, And he said, "My little granddaughter Sadie, she talked to half a million people. Mm -hmm. What you know, all over, everywhere. Divide and conquer. Yeah, when you're a family, whenever you, it's like the Bible talks about like." We're one body. Like, right. what's the what's the arms without the legs? You know, like That's one exactly right. body. When one thing succeeds, it all succeeds. And one part's honored, it's all honored. When one part hurts, it all hurts. And that's so yeah. true. Like, our family has kind of done that. That's yeah. powerful. Yeah. And I think, that's what I told somebody. They said, Sadie, like, how do you think you didn't, you know, lose your mind whenever you went to Hollywood or did oh, yeah. all this stuff? And I said, well, I think one, I can, one, I can see why people do, and I can see how people do. Mm-hmm. Like, Me fame too. is crazy. It can make you yeah, go crazy, too. That's right. But one thing I said is I didn't do it alone. Like, most people right. that get famous, it's they, mm-hmm. they feel alone because it's them that's highlighted. Right. And for me, I had 30 family members who are going through the exact same thing. And so... I didn't feel super different, you know, like we all were doing it together. And in some cases, yeah, there are moments of that, that isolating feeling or that lonely feeling of no one understands or no one gets it. But then at the end of the day, I'm like, but really my family does. And I think if you get in that situation, like remembering where you come from and keeping your people, like making sure your people understand, like my life is changing, but I'm not changing. Like my life is crazy, but like I need my people. Like just being honest and being where you're at is so important. And I think also, Sadie, the people that you you surround yourself with yeah um you know True. the people that work for you or the people that you're friends with the people you hang out with um if they're not good strong christian people mm-hmm. um then a lot of times you may follow them down the yeah. wrong path but i mean when you did dancing with the stars you had two mama with you mm-hmm. you know um your grandmother who you know um, stuck by your side the whole time. Yep, and so then you true. had your mom and dad on speed dial, yep. you know, FaceTime and, yep. you know, and so I, I believe it also has to do with who you surround yourself it's with. very true. Yeah, that's I very remember, true. I've never told this story publicly, and this is just funny because I'm sure people will take this and run with it, but I remember when I was on Dance with the Stars, and when you're in L.A., like, you just get invited to all these different things because you're kind of in the yeah. bubble. And I remember everyone on the cast got invited to J-Lo's Halloween party. Oh, wow. And I remember thinking, like, 
hmm, that's interesting. Like, I could go to J-Lo's Halloween party, but my grandma wants me to go watch Survivor with her. And yeah. I literally went and watched Survivor with my grandma. And everyone's probably like, why would you not go to J-Lo's yeah. Halloween party? But for me, I was 17 years old. Right. I knew, like, that is not a wise decision for That's me right. to go to That's this right. party. I just yeah. knew. It's just, for me, that was not going to lead me to do good things. Right. And so I stayed home with two mama, and she made pasta roni and cornbread from a box. <laughs> Pasteroni <laughs> and corporate pro box when we watch Survivor. And I don't regret that. Like, yeah, I really don't. Right. And I think it's like in those mm. decisions, it really shapes your life. And people don't realize mm -hmm. that one yes leads down a that's path exactly and one right. no yeah. leads down a path. Mm -hmm. And that's why your yes and your no's are really important in life. And, you know, people might say, well, what? You missed out on a really cool opportunity. And maybe I did, but I had a heck of a night. And when I yeah. look back at that season of my life, I don't regret moments. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, that was fun. Like, it was actually a good time. And so, and there's nothing. So Okay. There's nothing that you miss there, though. No. You know? I mean, your life has been great and full. And, I mean, not saying you haven't had your struggles, because yeah. we all have struggles. Totally. We're all human. Totally. But, yeah. um, but at the same time, you, you haven't missed anything. Totally. I mean, you know, God has given you exactly yep. what you like need. I like a lack. At every need. point in your life. So true. Yeah. That's good. So I did have a question come in from an anonymous uh, fan. And they <laughs> wanted to know from uh, Miss K. They wanted to know if you could cook a meal for Jesus. <laughs> what meal oh, would you cook? You don't know how many times I've been asked that. <laughs> and the last time I was asked that, I remember I said, well, everybody loves my chicken and dumplings. That's right. That's I just right. cook them for everything. And then I started going back... And really what I was thinking is what all y'all liked is the yeah. family, yeah. you know, my favorite dishes and all. And I said, now, I can make Mexican cornbread, but it's not quite as good as Lisa's, but I could <laughs> do that. And then I would just name her everything, and I said, but I'd have to give him a, a dessert. Of and, course. you know, you know, would he like a pie or would he, you know. <laughs> so I was just out with it, just different things that I cooked. I was just like, he's the most important, but... I, you know, I would treat him that way. Get, yeah, the best of the best. Yes. That's right. Well, that was a good question for you. And then they also had a question for you, Lisa. What is the most random assortment of foods that you could ever put together? <laughs> now, I know who your anonymous uh, person that asked this question is. And who might that be? Your dad. My dad. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll explain that. We were at the fair one year. And, oh, I remember that. And so they had these kebabs, and it was... <laughs> chicken and onion and bell pepper and <laughs> maybe those little tomatoes. Yeah. And they roasted them, you on know. On a stick. And, and they were all on a stick together, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, so Al and I got one of those and we were eating it. And um, so a, a news pe person came by, you know, yeah. wanting, and, and Alan was at the bathroom. So I'm just like, I don't want to <laughs> answer this, but you know. And uh, so he said, so what's the most interesting thing, you know, that you've had here at the fair? Because he was in the food section, you know. And I said, well, it's just a lot of different things you don't normally eat together. Your dad read that. And I am telling you, that's been 25 years ago. It's before I was born. Yeah. yeah. He's still talking He's about still it. He's still talking about it. You my know? dad, it's like, I, I hate he it for people. He doesn't forget anything. Because I've been with friends over at my house where they'll say something embarrassing. And, you know, I would like to say to them, it's okay. Like, it's okay. It's not a big deal. But what I have to say to them is my dad will literally bring that up every time you see him for at least the next That's 10 exactly years right. of your life. And then and then his poor son-in-laws. Oh. You know, all the things he, oh. he calls them. It's bad. Know? It's yeah. bad. So, okay, I got to ask you all about growing up with my dad because my dad, if, I guess like if you watch the show, you didn't really see my dad's full personality because, mm -hmm. you know, he was the boss and that was a lot of what the show highlighted. But he's crazy. Oh. So what was he like yeah. as a little boy? Well, he, he was so funny. Mm -hmm. He was always funny. I will remember that. I remember a trip when he was three years old. I went to El Dorado, Arkansas. We lived at Junction City at the time. And I remember taking it. We shopped at Walmart and we was coming home. And we were just not far from home. And I looked at him. And, of course, he was standing because they didn't have seatbelts right beside me at the car, you know. And I said, where did you get that hat? I just now noticed he had a baseball hat on, and he didn't have one. I mean, and he said, at the store. Oh, no. And I said, well, I didn't pay for it. He said, they just gave it to me. I said, did you ask anybody? And he said, no, I didn't see him. Oh, so, no. 
I mean, he was gonna. His first, okay, his, his first, first deal. deal. Yeah, he's hilarious. Like people that meet him are like, "You're not the funniest person I've ever met." I didn't know that. I'm like, "No, he really is." Like he's hilarious. He's like a he's he's really like a comedian. But he yeah. says the thing that no one else would say because everyone else would say that's rude. That's too far. But that's he just right. says yeah. it, and it I is wonder rude who gets and too that, far when who it's gets funny. that. From yeah. would it be his dad sometimes <laughs> yeah. saying things that nobody else would say? <laughs> that's yeah, that's really that, true. what yeah. he was saying. So but true. did I ever tell you about all the times he ran away from home? No. So yeah, just, that's funny because Bella ran away from home once, so maybe yeah. Bella gets that. Oh, he yeah. ran away yeah. from home about fifteen times. No, oh, uh, about every two weeks. No. Yeah, he did it, <laughs> and and you know he any time he disagreed or got mad at us, that's what he did. Ran well, away. How far from, would he go? Well, that's what's hilarious because I knew he wouldn't go there. I just knew him. I knew he didn't go there. It was all <laughs> directions, but a lot of times over the hill behind us. That That's way he weird. went, or he, he went. He built a fort out there. No, yeah, no, no, no. And, and then he would go down the uh, road. It's just a little bit dramatic. Oh, yes, just all the time. Yeah. And then, I tell you what got him back. We, I didn't worry. I didn't run looking. I was just, just cool about it. And then I would fix fried chicken, and this is really a true thing. And I'd say, Phil, when he smells this, he'll be back. And I put a little no fan, way. a fan in the kitchen to blow the smell up. <laughs> I hope that's in the movie. And, hilarious. And and then he he uh, he come back because sometimes he'd it packed like a hobo. He'd have his yeah. stick on it with a no, bag he, of he his did clothes. Not. Yeah. Yes, he did. That's and hilarious. he should have had a camera and taken oh, pictures. Ah, I that wish. Back and he would uh, he'd come in. and I said, "Oh, you're back." And he said, "What are you cooking?" <laughs> you know, because his yeah, all of a sudden whatever was, meant so much to him to run away. That smell of fried chicken and all the yeah. other smells that were coming out. I think that would still work for him. Yeah. yeah. I think so. he'd still come running for fried chicken. Yeah. Probably That's hilarious. Would, yeah. Well, one day we were all on the family vacation, and we had a legitimate conversation over the dinner table over who out of me, John Luke, and Bella are the most dramatic. And I was like, even the fact that we're actually having this conversation shows yeah. that we have a father who is very That's dramatic exactly right. and it's poor. And he's always kids. been like and, that. And you know what's funny is um, whenever... I came into the family. Of course, I'm only, let's see, about six and a half years older than Willie. Yeah. And um, so when I came in the family, he was, you know, 11 or 12. Yeah. And um, so he would he would move all the time. Like, they all lived together in a back room. <laughs> I know. And then he would move. Like, he went down to the cook shack. And Outside. He fixed no. It. Yeah. No walls. What? He, where, where they clean fish now? Yeah. Yeah. So he would go out there. He had fix it all up. He had hang curtains. Painted it bright blue. Yeah. Uh, put Take all of his stuff out there. <laughs> and so that's where he moved to. That is hilarious. All right. So then he would go to another place. He, How about the metal storage building yeah. in so the So right back? behind her house. Where he put she his had bed a, there? Yeah. yeah. Well, oh. he would have a makeshift bed. Yeah. That yeah. He so didn't move hilarious. his bed. So he would move back there. There. I mean, he moved all over the property. Gran Granny's face. porch. Yeah. Oh he my moved gosh, there. that is yeah. hilarious. I mean, he was always leaving and moving. That's leaving right. And what moving. would it be like? Okay, so at least so whenever, like, finally, when Missy and Mom came into the picture, Jessica, like. What would be a family dinner? Like, what would that look like? Like, does it look like it does now, or were the boys like so much crazier when y'all were younger? Um, I would say probably they were a lot crazier then, yeah. and they argued a lot. Really, during okay. those dinners, I feel you know? like uh, they're probably really loud because they're oh, still yeah. loud. Yeah. It's right, like yeah. the loudest person wins the conversation, and right. so when exactly. you're all together with the and Robinsons, they, and, it's like, and, and, yeah, and, and they played games, you know, all the time, cards. Um, Dominoes, so yeah, they were always. And when loud. Phil and them and the boys played dominoes, they wouldn't just put the domino; it's just slam, slam, slam. Yeah. slam. Well, for yeah. those of you who don't know who are listening, Phyllis, um, yeah, for how many years y'all didn't? Four, Forty-four 40, years. Four years. Yeah. Phil, you know, didn't they know. thought y'all had four boys, and then all of a sudden, forty-four years later, they get a letter, and turns out that this woman was saying that she thinks she's Phil's daughter and yeah. you know at first I'm sure y'all are thinking no way that's crazy because there's, right. there's been several people who have done that and uh <laughs> yes. yeah that's part of fame too but um yeah. this one was really legitimate so they took a DNA test and it was a 99.999 yeah, whatever that's match right. That's right. and so they but y'all welcomed her in so beautifully we all did and I think that was so cool one thing that y'all are so good at is just accepting change and like going with it and I think mm -hmm. that 
in order to do that, you have to be rooted in who you are in Christ, mm-hmm. you know, too, to even be able to allow like change to happen through right. you or around you. And y'all are so good at that. Um, I love how you mentioned like, thank you for choosing life. And like you preach about that a lot. You do so much for that. Um, I want to hear a little bit about your passion for that because that's a conversation that a lot of people don't talk about and you've been really bold in that. Well, at 16, um, I had chosen, you know, a lot of uh, wrong things in my life. And um, at 16, I was dating someone and found out that I was pregnant. Hmm. And um, so went and talked with my parents. We decided that abortion would be the best thing to do, which I'd never heard of that. I didn't Hmm. know what it was. I never knew that either when I was a teenager. I didn't even know it was available. I I didn't even know about it. The word, I didn't know. Wow, that's crazy how much times have changed. Uh Uh-huh, and so um, my mom and my dad, you know, both told me it's not a baby, it's just a glob of tissue, and they Mm. just take it out, you know. And um, so I went and and had an abortion, you know, Mm. at 16 years old. And um, it was a very dark time, Hmm. you know. And um, so now, um, and, you know, I think I always knew that that we were wrong about that. Mm -hmm. Because why else would I have the guilt and the shame of that? And think about it every day. Remember how you said you think about it every day. Um, But, you know, when I was at the abortion clinic, they told me three things that day that were lies. Just -hmm. straight up lies. One was, it's just a glob of tissue. Mm -hmm. And we know now, you know, scientifically, yeah. that that the life begins at conception. Yeah. The second lie they told me was, once you leave here, your body will be fine, and you know you'll heal up in a couple of days, and you'll be good as new. Really? Again, that was a lie. Wow. Um, I had two pregnancies, um, Anna and Alex. Anna was a premature baby. You know, weighed a pound and fifteen ounces. Wow. Um, then Alex almost came four months early. And then wow. the third baby I lost, wow. you know, so I had a miscarriage. So something that they did to me, mm-hmm. um, you know, messed messed up my female wow. reproductive organs. So anyway, um, and then the third lie um, was is probably the one that is the biggest lie. And it was that when you leave here, Lisa, don't even think about this anymore. And, mm. of course, I say, Lisa, they didn't call me by my name. I was just a number. Wow. You know? Yeah. But, you don't even, you never have to think about this again. Just go on and live your life and put this behind you. Wow. And, you know, that's been 40 years ago because I'm 56. So wow. that means that for 40 Still years I have thought it. about that. Wow. Every day. Every day. Wow. And so my passion now is to just tell people mm. that those are lies. Yeah. That is a lie. Yeah. You know, whenever you have an abortion, you take a life. Mm. I took a life. But not only one life, I took generations of lives. Wow. Because I took my child's life, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. And and so we need to know that abortion is a lie. Yeah. We need to know what it is. Yeah. But that's just it. Hmm. They won't let us say what abortion is. Yeah. You know, they won't let you show what abortion is. Yeah. It gets shut down. That's exactly. Yeah. I put something on my Facebook one day about this guy that was going around, and he was saying, "Do you believe, um, yeah, or you know, are you pro-life or yeah. or, or pro-choice?" Yeah. And so they, he interviewed like four or five people, and they were all pro pro-choice. Mm-hmm. So then he shows them a video that this guy does of an abortion. Now it's not on a baby; it's of like um like a simulation. Yeah, you know, and um. And he shows all of them that. And he comes back afterwards and says, did that move you any? Are you still pro-life? I mean, pro-choice or are you pro-life now? Every one of them changed their mind. Wow. Because they saw that they video. Saw they the saw truth. what it is. Yeah. And they saw the truth. Yeah. And so, I mean, I believe that God redeemed me totally. and to have a voice. Totally. To, and my roar is to yeah. let people know that abortion is wrong. You can be redeemed from it though. Yeah. And you you know, you will have the mm-hmm. regret and but God can take the shame of it. I'll yeah. regret what I did for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. Um but I no longer live in shame That's awesome. and guilt because God took all of that. Yeah. But we need people to know. Yeah. And so awesome. my roar is on, is about <laughs> being yeah, well. pro life and 
and pro love because awesome. for so many people we we've, we've not been nice about exactly. it. Exactly. You know. I so love we that. have to love people where they are, mm -hmm. and sometimes that's post abortive. Sometimes it's before they have an abortion, but we've got to love them where they are and tell them the truth. Yeah, have true empathy and compassion to where they are. I love how like That's Jesus right. and all the scripture, he had so much compassion mm -hmm. on everyone, no matter what they were doing, no matter right. if they were super sinful or super sick or whatever mm -hmm. it was. Like so or much Super self-righteous. Super self-righteous. Yeah. All across the board, like he had enough compassion to sit with them and love them and mm -hmm. be with them and then ultimately die for them right. and give a uh, hope and redemption for them. And that's the same for us today. And Man, it's just so good. Uh, y'all, this has been such a good conversation. I could talk to y'all forever. We've already gone an hour, so I guess we wow. should stop. But this has just been so, so you don't have good. To have us back. I will. I will. Like, maybe this is going to have to be a two part thing. This That's is right. Right. We, we just all got kind to some of, of the, things. I know. Yeah. We just got to so much of the good stuff, and yeah. we haven't even tapped into all of it. But hey, guys, if y'all listen to this and you love this conversation, you can find a lot of different um, things that they've written. They both have books, they have done the I'm Not Ashamed, which I. Uh, love uh, i'm second sorry i'm, I'm second. second videos that are so good they um are on um bill's podcast some yeah. but also they have a new book out called sister roar that you should go get right now i actually had the privilege of writing the forward to it and man there's just so much whoa that's good advice in here and on this podcast so y'all i guess i'm gonna have to have y'all back for part two yeah. another hour special <laughs> but i love you guys thanks I love for being on my you. podcast too, sweetness. it's so fun. good